This video is sponsored by Bespoke Post. Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my backyard. It's a kind of a mushy and but warm December day here in Minnesota. It's uh, 38 degrees, which is warm, but uh, in a month, like in January, it'll probably be like a high of negative five, which is probably when this video is gonna be released. So I'll be looking back on this thinking, man, it was so warm and so pleasant and nice. So today we're gonna cut up a, uh, a walnut tree, or I guess two logs from a walnut tree that was struck by lightning. I picked up this tree back in August. It had been struck by lightning about 10 years prior. It had some like open wounds that were facing the sky. So the, uh, the tree had collected a bunch of water as it was standing there. So the logs were super waterlogged. But I'm excited to cut it apart and uh, see what the lightning did to the tree. Uh, normally, these, uh, these types of trees are considered uh, absolute garbage because the lightning absolutely destroys the structural integrity of the tree. So typically these are just waste, but uh, you never know. And you might still find something smaller and usable in there if you don't mind a little bit of waste or a lot of epoxy, <laughs> whatever your preference is. So these are the two logs. This is the base of the tree. This is the uh, upper section. They're both about 12 feet long. You can see all of the crazy structural defects in here already. Uh, this was there as it was standing and we're starting to get some bigger splits coming through too. You know, even though these are end sealed, this tells me that this split was already kind of in there. And now as it's starting to dry a little bit, we're starting to see uh, that split as well. So I expect to see sort of two things. We'll see a lot of the continuation of those splits through the whole logs, but then something we'll have to show in the future is the structural integrity of the wood as it actually dries. Because I fully expect these to you know, air quotes degrade as they dry. As they dry, more splits will probably open up and deem the wood less desirable. But yeah, it's already, it's only been a few months and they're already kind of opening up all over the place. So this is kind of why most people don't bother with this stuff because it's uh, usually in pretty rough shape. So I'm gonna go grab the, uh, the talent handler and we'll dig these two guys out of here and you got them on the saw. I still have to figure out what I want to do with this because yeah, we'll see. <laughs> I think no matter which way you cut this, you're still going to be dealing with some split along the length. Even if you try and let's say quarter saw it, they're not perfect quarters. So you're still going to have some loss there as well. And well, we'll look at it when we, on, when we get on the saw, but this tree has got a spiral in it. So these cracks are not straight all the way down through they spiral around. So quarter sawing this doesn't really make any difference as far as yield goes because it'll hit that split again somewhere in that quarter.
there it goes. Oh, maybe not. Still got it. It is very slippery. Let's see if I can just set this on this other log. Right over here, I guess. I'll take a spot for it for now until we uh, get done with the first piece. Or until we're ready for it, I guess. Let's figure out how the heck we're gonna saw this first one. So here's the log on the saw. Now it's out in the open. We have a better, uh, got a better look at this thing. And I think this is gonna be one of those logs that no matter how you saw it, someone's gonna tell you you sawed it wrong. Because <laughs> uh, looking at this, there's no like good way to saw this, like to avoid any sort of major defects or issues along the way. So I'm looking at things like maybe yield and like visual interest and uh and shape and things so i'm leaning towards cutting it 90 degrees from how it's sitting right now so kind of cutting through here we can expose some stuff around this uh limb that was here we got another limb down here which should show some interesting visual things that will eliminate this uh this furrow this will be completely in the waist and will be somewhere cutting along this way so the first top of the slabs will have you know a full piece on this side and a full piece on that side so they have two kind of whole halves and then the bottom you'll have well we'll see how big or how far down this crack goes but hopefully you know we got a good amount of meat there and then like a little tiny piece there yeah i don't i don't know <laughs> but you can see how the the tree kind of curves or the defects kind of curve so we start here and it kind of curves around and you're kind of more up in here now so i mean just like cutting with the cracks and making some thirds would be impossible first of all with this saw you would have to split the whole tree and i think you just make a giant mess of things trying to do that you end up spending way too much time splitting material and trying to get things apart and then squaring them back up again, get them straightened out versus just cutting it and just getting what you get. And especially on something like this, where there's a highly high likelihood that what you're going to see today on song day is going to be a lot better than what you see on the day these things are dried. I don't really think it's, it's worth it to go too crazy and think too hard about this one. Just start getting the saw on and getting it on sticks and seeing kind of where it goes. So I'm going to roll this thing 90 degrees. And then we can uh, do a last little bit of leveling and get that facing cut made. And this one will be uh, on its way to becoming something usable. So I think that's uh, actually right where I want it. I mean, it's at this point, it's as good as anything. All right, let's see what we got going on here. Besides being, you know, heavy. Holy crap. I know we talk about this every single time we cut walnut, but uh, when you first cut it, very green. As it oxidizes and sits, the heartwood will turn more of that purple color that we're kind of used to. But, you know, imagine all this green being more like in this color palette range. That right there is a structural defect. It's still tight. So that's a crack right there. And uh, so is this one. So anywhere where you see these streaks of oxidation, where it's actually the color it's supposed to be, you know, that's, uh, that's a crack. That's infiltration from the outside kind of getting in here. So all this is structural defects. But uh, it's cool looking though. Not really a whole lot right now. <laughs> but 
But, uh, you know, that's walnut. We're kind of getting into the heartwood. We've got the sapwood here, and we'll get into the uh, the heartwood. The um, I, I didn't give any measurements on this log. The current cut's at 26 and a half inches off the bed. So as it's sitting down here, it's probably about a 28 inch diameter log. Kind of down here, which is, uh, what is this, like 12 feet up from the from the ground. So the, I think the butt end was like 32 or something along those lines. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this aside and grab that uh, top section, the crotch section, and do the same thing to it, get it to a facing cut, and then we'll roll them both over onto the bed, and we'll, we'll be able to cut them both at the same time and uh, slab them out that way. So time to move stuff around. While I'm thinking about how I'm gonna saw this goofy log, let's hop into the shop and talk about Bespoke Post. Bespoke Post is a monthly membership club delivering a box of awesome, top shelf goods from under the radar brands. It's free to join and you can skip a month or cancel any time. 90% of the products come from small brands, many of which are based right here in the US. The knife in the Terra box, which I'm using to open these boxes, is made by Bare Bones based in Salt Lake City. Every month, Bespoke Post introduces their members to cool new products, outdoor gear, barware, home and garden goods, clothing, and more, based on a preference quiz that members fill out. Every box of awesome has around $70 worth of goods inside, but only costs a fraction of that value. One of the boxes I received was the pop box. It included a collapsible microwave popcorn bowl, cage-free duck fat, and microwave kernels. You can even preview your box before it's shipped. You'll get a box of awesome assigned to you, and before it's shipped, you'll get a preview of what comes inside to decide if you would like to keep it, swap it for another box, or skip the month entirely for no charge. You only pay for what you want. Another box I received was Retreat. This included an on-the-go hammock and blanket, and now anytime I want a break, I can just take a hike. To get 20% off your first box of awesome, click the link in the description and enter Matt Cremona 20 at checkout or go to bespokepost.com slash Matt Cremona 20. Thanks Bespoke Post for sponsoring this video. So here's my uh, terrible no good plan. <laughs> I'm going to cut parallel to this fissure uh, in here. So I'm going to roll this log a little bit, get this fissure kind of parallel to the bed, and that'll get me into some of the crotch figure up here. Let's go to the other side. So that'll give me some of this crotch figure, some of this crotch figure. It's going to be a little less crotch figure there. Because uh, these two crotches are at like different angles to each other. You can't get both of them perfect. You have to kind of pick and choose or split the difference. Today, I'm going to split the difference. We'll see how that goes. It's a bold move. We'll see if, we'll see if it pays off. <laughs> but that I will be tucking this larger crotch thing down in between the bunks and just kind of rolling the side over a little bit. I think it needs to come over, I don't know, 45 degrees or so. And uh, this end's probably going to have to be, well, the far end's probably going to have to come up to level up with this end because we got quite a bit of taper here as well. So I have a fair amount of work to do to get this thing actually ready to, uh, to saw. Okay. Now, how do I hold it there while picking up the other side? Uh, maybe I should have picked up the other side first. I don't know. I have a stupid idea. Is 
This looks like a giant wedge to me. See if that does anything. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I like it when a stupid idea actually works. That's the best feeling. No. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess we can start over. <laughs> So that'll compensate for that rollback. It felt there was a machine that's connected to. <laughs> then I could just move it with the machine. <laughs> oh, oh. Big money, big money, big money. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Yes. Yes! Yes! That's more stable than the other one. <laughs> All right, this one's got quite a bit more going on because of all the limbs and stuff. So I want to take just a quick look here. Gorgeous stuff. So kind of clear with some really tight knots here and there. And we got, uh, you know, some rot and decay from around there. But you can see how the tree has uh, actually healed itself up and covered that opening up. We got a nice little bullseye thing going on down here. And we'll have a little crotch figure right up in here. And it looks like there is a, a bit of curl through here too. So we should, oh yeah, there is. You can see the undulation out here. Every one of those little bumps is a little ripple in the grain producing curl. Yeah, you can see it really good on camera now. It's all curly through there. So, maybe there'll be something promising <laughs> inside of these logs. We'll see. This is really scratched the surface. So uh, I'm going to try and get this off of here and roll over and we'll see if we can like finagle both of these logs onto the bed somehow. Not quite what I wanted to do, but that works.
little slippery out here. Oh, it's very slippery now. Still sliding. Oh! <laughs> oh man! This thing's gonna fight me the whole way. So uh, this is not gonna quite work as is. As you can see, I'm sticking off the bed just a hair. And I got this nub here kicking over the bigger log a little bit. So uh, <laughs> I'm just gonna grab a chainsaw and nibble it back and hopefully I can slide it over and just uh, make it happen. Cause uh, I don't know, I guess I could just saw them separately, but uh, I think it's more fun when I saw them together. <laughs> I think that'll work. <laughs> they're, they're tucked in there pretty tightly. This side should still clear. All right, let's actually saw something finally. Just a little tiny obstruction. It's a pretty conservative cut. <laughs> There's not much waste here. Oh, that's pretty. Oh.
while I'm resetting here, I know some people ask me to tell them what size that cuts I'm making or what thickness I'm cutting at. So today I'm cutting at double four quarter. <laughs> so every uh, numbered tick on this side is a four quarter board. So I'm going every even number and every even number gives me two pieces of four quarter plus the blade curve that would have been in the middle. Uh, ends up being around two and three eighths of an inch thick. Most of the time I'm cutting 10 quarter, but uh, these logs are not super big. So I don't really feel the need to cut that thick and cutting double four quarters easy because I can just use the scale that's already on the saw. Yeah, it's 3.30 and uh, with the overcast skies today, it's getting a little too dark for this. So I'm gonna call it a day here and we'll pick up with this, I don't know, maybe probably not tomorrow. Tomorrow's gonna rain slash snow. So it might be a few days until I see you again, but. So a little more snowy than uh, than last time. It's been actually a couple of weeks now. We had some really like heavy wet snow that covered everything. It was absolutely beautiful. And then uh, the temps just like dropped like crazy. And uh, let's see what like two days ago it was negative 20. Today it's above freezing again. So that's kind of weird. Over a 50 degree temp swing in a few days. It's definitely weird being outside again. But uh, let's get these things uncovered and start taking a look through uh, this first one. I think the second one, what I'm gonna do, since it has a little limb thing sticking up there, is I will stack this one as it is kind of laying right now. So we'll keep on going and we'll cut this thing all the way down to the bed and then we'll roll it over and take a look at it last. But I wanna take a look at these first five and we'll kind of see uh, how things are doing. And I'm guessing this is completely frozen together now. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, a little bit of snow. <clears throat> Let's see. Oh yeah, that's very much frozen. Everything's a hammer. And a pry bar. There you go. That's actually pretty cool. That scarring. That was slick. Or, I don't know if slick is the right word, but cool, interesting, different. One of those words. Let's see what we got here. So on here you can kind of see how the scarring is kind of coming in through here, this crack. It's where that tree kind of bursts apart. You can see like how far down it goes and where it actually repaired itself and recovered. So, you know, large splits like this, pretty common in trees like this, but they do produce some really cool stuff. Like this is, look how cool that is. Look at that. That's something cool going on there, <laughs> which is nice. Otherwise though, if this uh, stays together through drying, 
looks like we have some really nice clear uh, wallet to work with, which is nice. Down here is pretty cool too, whatever this is. That seems pretty cool. I mean, it's pretty cool. It is structurally defective, but it is cool. Okay, Slab 2, what's up with you? Except, what's up with me? <laughs> Can't throw water. So definitely interesting how like clear and okay it is down here at the, the base of the tree. You know, as we travel up, you, know, you start to see all of the, the defects and the growth trying to compartmentalize all that going on here. So we got the furrows from the sapwood growing back around again. And we're getting some more kind of larger structural defects down through here. So we got some pretty large cracks through the center here. And you can see like these kind of like darker areas. That is actually a split in the wood that hasn't quite opened up yet. But we have the oxidation as a clue that there is going to be a defect there opening up as soon as this stuff dries. But I don't see a whole lot of them. They're pretty contained to just that side of the tree, which is pretty cool. This side looks fine, oddly enough. Oh, yeah, it's sliding too, <laughs> and I'm sliding. Ugh. Who put the snow here? <laughs> it's like someone brushed off a whole log worth of snow and just dumped it in front of the saw. Okay, we're going over. <sighs> All right, go lay down. more ice and snow on here than there is sawdust. You might have to switch to hot. <laughs> yeah, cold's not doing anything. So this is the uh, the base of the tree. We got a crack starting to really show itself here. And we do have some darker areas here which may be signs of cracking, but I don't, looking closely, it doesn't quite look like that, but maybe. Maybe it is. I don't know. As we get down here, we do have some more structural defects. You can see another one starting to form here with this inclusion along the sap line there. And this is, I don't know, it's like a, like a knot and some kind of crazy stuff around it. So there's definitely some good stuff happening around these cracks and splits. We got a little bit of figure around that knot, of course. And we got our split down through here with the uh, indicators of feature splits showing there, but still looking pretty good. I mean, this is a cool tree for sure. Makes you kind of wonder like how it would look had it not been struck by lightning. Like how much of a nicer saw log it would have been, a traditional saw log, because it's, it's super clear. You know, if you don't look at the, the splits from the lightning, you got a few knots up here in the middle, but that whole section down there is six feet, completely clear. This is completely clear here too. This would have been a nice log in a traditional sense, for sure. And we're like, we'll measure in a second, but we're at least two feet wide down there. 
Okay, I broke that off. <laughs> it's lighter now. Ugh. Let's see what's going on here. Ugh. What is this, four? Yeah. We're just gonna do little splishy splashies today. So starting down here towards the top of the tree, you can see how the grain actually split out and cross some grain lines, across some growth rings. But anyway, there's a little bit of curl in there. Isn't that nice? A little, little undulations there, some curl. So you can see how that literally just kind of blew off the side of the tree and split it. And this is the new kind of furrow thing growing around there, trying to re-encapsulate it. We got the same kind of cracks running down the middle there with our figured areas here in the middle around those knots and things. And we get back down to here where we have fairly clear material with uh, some cracking. And I think these are, this one's definitely looking like it's got a little kind of crack action going on there. Like this will probably split a little bit. So you probably have some defect here, which means that these here too are probably uh, future defects, future cracks. But look at the separation here in the sapwood. Where the sapwood actually starts and the heartwood is. This is the new area growing around this damaged and uh, harmed area, trying to re-encapsulate the tree and uh, cover back up. So that is that furrow starting to kind of wrap back around. Very cool how trees grow and whatnot. <laughs> Oh, we're starting to get a little bit of crotch thing going on down here. Oh! Buck, it's heavy. So look at this crazy defect. Come on, cracking all the way down here, out that way. And you got another one right here, kind of running through the pith, the center of the tree. And then the furrow, closing up that injury on the outside. Oh, there's... Quite a bit going on in this log. All right, well, I'm gonna get the saw back out and we'll uh, we'll keep going on this. I'll probably have to move some of this guy out of the way first. So people always have to give me crap for using the hand crank, but you can't, you just can't beat the amount of like feedback and sensitivity that that gives you. I can actually feel the saw <laughs> cutting through the snow here. I can actually feel that on the crank. It gives you an incredible amount of feedback as you're cutting.
Okay. Oh. <laughs> I would say that was a pretty good fail. Way too much loft. <laughs> Let's see if I can redeem myself. That was better. That one's kind of snowy. So this one here, we are in the pith, so the center of the tree would have been right here. So these are actually completely separated. So they can come completely apart. We got to split that one's right down the center there, right through the pith. But we got some pretty cool crotch figure going on over here, which is super nice. <laughs> Coming down the tree, besides all the structural defects, once again, super clear. Like, super clear. This is all Coruscant and uh, straight grain and pretty well beautiful. You can see, oh, we got the split that goes right through the center of the tree and we have the split that radiates out this way. So this board actually has a split through its thickness. But the one on the other side here is uh, perfectly fine through the whole thickness. So presumably this will still be a fully intact piece that can be used separately. Over here, we get, uh, we're going to have some structural issues. You can see all the smaller cracks starting in here. Kind of surrounding these larger ones in the middle here. But, check it out, a pruning scar. So this was pruned back, this limb was pruned off. The tree grew right around it, encapsulated it. And look at the crazy cool grain right up in here. Gorgeous. And then we get to the top again. We got some more little hints of crotch figure, but you, know, you can see all the very small minor cracking, which will probably open up even more as time goes on. Really cool piece of wood though. That one's got a lot of structural defects, but it's very cool. <sighs> Not very good. So if we take a little closer look here, you can see all those dark streaks where all those structural defects are gonna be. I, I don't know, I mean, I think it looked pretty cool. Like there's gonna be some little cracks and things in here and splits as this dries. I think that's just gonna be absolutely beautiful. Especially with like fun details like this, where you have that growth around that pruning cut. I, I think that's pretty cool. This one exhibits kind of the same things, a little more restrained as we get towards the outside of the log. We got a little wider sap band, but we do have all of these uh, structural defects forming in here and at least now we're through that uh, pruning cut there so another cool piece of wood and as we look kind of here at the end you can see we're kind of through a lot of the larger cracks that were established we're kind of past that and we're on to these little things so you can see this uh, little crack right here presenting on the end that's this crack here on the surface running down so I expect those will open up a bit, but uh, you know, depending on what you want to do with these things, could make some pretty awesome pieces of wood things, things made out of wood. <laughs> we got uh, one quick one to look at, and then we can start digging into that guy. <laughs> it's a lump of snow there. So this one, not a whole lot going on. We're getting towards the sap, so there's not a whole lot of heartwood, but still some kind of fun, interesting, unique green stuff going on. We got this uh, start of the inclusion furrow split thing, uh, the whatever you want to call it on this side. Otherwise though, it looks like you know, we got a few little cracks here and there. So, you know, a few, Structural defects in this one still, but 
you know, just kind of a sappy piece of walnut. So that takes care of that, uh, that whole first butt log <laughs> all done. I'm gonna start digging through this guy and, uh, and seeing what we get. So bottom slab first. I don't think we're gonna see a whole lot on this one until we get a little deeper into the log. This one's definitely a weird shape. We got some nice section of crotch figure coming through here. And we got a little sprinkling of the early stages of some crotch figure. The next one should have some good stuff. It's a little knot and stuff. Not actually not a whole lot of structural defects like here up. You can start to see them forming down in here though. So that's uh that's kind of interesting. I wonder what kind of where these defects actually started, you know, up the tree. I have a feeling we're gonna find out though. I think it's starting to get a little more interesting. Ooh, okay. This is promising. I'm liking what I'm seeing here. Okay, how about slab three? Ooh, that one's got some crotch. Actually, it's got a lot of crotch. That's a crotchy one. I like it. So I'm gonna start with this one because it's crazy. <laughs> this is the third cut. Look at all oh, the crotch figure down here. It's got a crit, like a, I don't know, it's got like almost three feet of crotch right through here. And then you get to like another like mega crotch zone. And then like the ultra crotch zone <laughs> down here. So you get like progressively more better crotchier. This one's beautiful. That's just like perfect feather. This one's got all kinds of crazy stuff going on around it because of this rot through here. So we got some rot staining and actual rot punkiness right here. And that surrounds all of this beautiful figure right here. Bananas. <laughs> you, can start, you can still see our little structural defects there. This guy's like a more placid version of uh, number three. So we got our little structural defects. We get up into the uh, the more intense crotch here. We have our pretty good size crotch feather here as well. And then the, um, the one towards the top here is basically not there yet. So, I don't know, this is, like this is worth it alone. <laughs> Just this one slab and all the crazy figure. And we're only three in. But I, th I think now we're going to start seeing some more defects because, you know, we're into this furrow here. So that is the uh, one of the, the furrows that was on the outside of the log. We're kind of getting into that now, so maybe it'll get more crazy on these, uh, on these next two. I don't know. I'll get them set up and then uh, we'll take a look. See if these got any crazier oh, as we got further into this log. Holy crap. Yep. That's a yep. It's a big old yep from me. Matt, why don't you move the water closer? Shut your mouth. <laughs> this one's been out in the rain already. I mean, this is beautiful. The fact that this would normally be just waste. It's kind of sad because there's still, even though like from, from a traditional standpoint, if you weren't going to use all the cracked and, you know, defective parts, there's still a lot of like really good smaller chunks in here. If you wanted to cut around all the crap. 
So check this out. We got another huge crotch feather with a little inclusion right here. But otherwise, look at all that. Freaking gorgeous. We're getting past the crotch figure here. We're getting into the, I guess, the meat of the crotch figure down here with this extra, like, you know, it's staining from that cut here. Gorgeous. Compression figure on top. And uh, we're towards the pith now. So we got our, our split through the pith. And it looks like some of those structural defects run up pretty high. This one's been sitting out for a bit because it was on top. I guess it wasn't. This one, you can see the structural defect here presenting to the surface. You can see this one didn't get to the surface. So this has got a split through the thickness that we can't see on the face. And as we get up here, that, that defect continues. We're kind of past all the figure down in here. Then we got the last little bit of crotch figure up here on the top. So, gorgeous. <laughs> very, very gorgeous. So we have a few small chunks left and uh, we're almost we're almost there. I think we got like, what, two full length slabs and then we'll start getting into some partials. So I think we're kind of through a lot of the fun figury bits at this point. With a few kind of oddball shapes here and there. We got some kind of bullseye figure thing going on down here at the bottom. So we are to like the, uh, the outside of the crotch figure down here now, so just a little tiny bit of figure down there. We are just kind of clear walnut all the way through here, and we get down to the base of this log, and we have this bark inclusion and some kind of figure from this limb here, which kind of went whoop, <laughs> up in uh, up in that way. Oddly enough, though, I'm not there's no there's no structural defects from the lightning strike through the middle here that's just all clear walnut that hasn't been affected at all so this one here not a whole heck of a lot going on down here or at least on the top side we're through all the figure you know this is out to bark now here in the middle but down here we got some uh some kind of cool figure zone we got some nice figure up and through here into some crotch figure down in here so this is a Kind of a fun little figure zone. All right, let's take a look at this last few, kind of more cookie type of chunks of wood. You know, with their cookie bullseye type stuff with some uh, kind of interesting and fun figure. A little bit of figure there on the top of this little bullseye. Kind of a fun cookie type slab. Kind of the same thing going on here. We got our figure and whatnot up top there and circular bullseye type of pattern and a surprise <laughs> same thing going on here got a bullseye pattern and we got some some figure and stuff going on right there so this was kind of a fun exploration of uh, another log that would otherwise be uh, typically discarded I think you know if you're doing if you're looking for you know every single board to be perfect like your commercial grading type of thing obviously logs like this wouldn't really work but if you're looking for you know something with a lot of character and a lot of interest if you want to do some bow ties and epoxy work or something then something like this is going to give you a whole heck of a lot of uh, things to look at a lot of defects to fix and uh, and stuff like that a lot of cool character if you're more like me and you're just looking for big pieces of wood you can select furniture parts out of then this is definitely a good option too you can have more waste but at least you'll have the ability to kind of massage your pieces and parts out of uh, out of all the different pieces of wood and everything. So I think overall, kind of a fun, kind of a fun log, and we'll see how it ends up drying and what ends up happening with all of those like micro defects in there. How how open up <laughs> they get, and uh, we'll, we'll make something out of this someday in the future. So look for that in a few years, probably, because that's when I'll get to it. <laughs> So that's going to do it for this one. Thank you, as always, for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments on uh, 
is it worth sawing up a log that's otherwise garbage? Please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, <laughs> happy woodworking.